So hold on a second. The Blue Jays, a team who coming into the game had won seven of their last 30 games. So the record of seven in 23 ain't, ain't too pretty. And the Blue Jays have been awful since the beginning of May. The Yankees, however, since starting the year 8 and 10, have gone on a stupidly good tear. They're on like a 30 and 10 run at that point. They're now 38, well, they were 38 and 20 coming into the game. They've won a lot of games lately. They, I think they once they were 7 and 3 in the last 10 games. They're feeling good. The Jays are 1 and 9. They've lost 6 straight. And the Jays win 4 3. What? We talk about it, guys. We talk about it. Timely hitting, good pitching, and good defense is going to win you ballgames. What have we seen a lot lately? The hitting's been awful. The defense at quite a few times has been shaky at that. And the starting pitching, the pitching overall just has not been very good. It's been a complete effort of terribleness from the Toronto Blue Jays lately. But today, different story. Starting pitcher was uh, Clayton Richard on the mound today, and his, and his line doesn't suggest. I think he pitched a little bit of a better ball game than his line suggests, other than two-run shot to uh, Clint Frazier. Other than that, I thought he did pretty well. He went four and two-thirds, four hits, two runs, four strikeouts, walked three guys. I mean, what we've noticed early on from Clayton Richard in his very, very short time with the Jays is that his command has been a little bit of an issue here to start his young career as a Blue Jay, even though he's an older guy. But um, the bullpen did a great job. You know, Thomas Pinnell came out to face one batter, got the job done. It was, a, it was a deep fly ball, but he got the guy out nonetheless. Daniel Hudson, great job, inherited some runners. You know, I think Thomas Pinnell walked a couple, and we're in a little bit of a sticky pickle right now. But Daniel Hudson comes out, gives him a hit, no walks, no runs, two strikeouts, in an inning in a third. Great job by Daniel Hudson. Joe Biagini in the, in the eighth inning. Gives up a run, and then Ken Giles comes out for the four-out save and gets the job done. Now, let's, let's, let's rewind now to the top of the fourth where Fraser hits the two-run shot. At this point in time, the Jays have one hit against Tanaka. They're not hitting anything. This is going to be a complete disaster. It's, it's kind of shaping up to be. Bottom five, Randall Gritchick at the dish. All right? It's 0-1 on Gritchick. And T Tanaka throws a pitch, and it should have been a strike. But Angel Hernandez, probably the worst umpire in baseball, calls it a ball. Tanaka, Gary Sanchez, they're kind of shocked it was called a ball. I think everybody in, in, the, in the building and all the coaches and all the players are all like, well, that, that was a ball. But one and one count. Next pitch, a slider from Tanaka. It goes right over the middle of the plate. And Randall Gritchick gets barreled a ball and crushes it to straightaway center. And it's gone. Cutting the lead in half. It's now 2-1. And I'm going to hear all over the place, oh, well, if that was called a strike, it, you know, it would have been a different story. It could have been. But nonetheless, it's a 1-1 pitch. And it's a slider. And he hangs it hard. <laughs> you don't do that no matter what count it is. Even a 1-1 count, you're down 2-1 if, you, if, if it's a ball, whatever. But you don't throw a cement mixer. And that's exactly what it did to Randall Gritchick. And it leaves the ballpark, cutting the lead in half. Like I said, it's 2-1. Next batter, Kevin Biggio. He walks. Great job there. Guriel Jr. pops out. And Biggio steals second on the play. I think it was a, they had to review it. They initially called him out. But one of the other cameras suggested that the ball did pop out of his glove. And it wasn't on a transfer. So Biggio safe at second base. Next batter, Freddy Galvis. And Freddy, on a full count again, he gets a hanger from Tanaka, and he belts it to right center field, and it's gone! Two-run shot for Freddy Galvis. The Jays have two home runs off of Tanaka in the same inning. You don't usually hear Blue Jays' home run against Tanaka in the same sentence very often. It doesn't happen. But in this case... The Jays have a 3-2 lead. What the heck's going on here? Danny Jensen then grounds out, so there's two out, nobody on. Eric Sogard doubles to right field. Great job there. Next batter, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He singles to left field. Sogard comes in to score. The Jays add on to their lead. It's now 4-2. 
The Jays put up a force. They put up three runs in the final two games at Coors Field. That ballpark is known as a hitter's ballpark, and they are not known for their pitching. We scored three runs in, in two ball games. Then you come and face the Yankees, and Tanaka's basically been unhittable as of late. And you score four in one inning, and you have a 4-2 lead. What the heck just happened? Now, as I mentioned earlier, Joe Biagini in the eighth inning gave up a run. But you got to give credit. I think it was in, was it in the eighth inning, I think it was. Uh, or seventh. I think it might have been the seventh inning. It was an inning, ending, uh, in, inning, ending, what the heck? Inning, ending, double play. It might have... I think it was. I think, I think it was the end of the seventh inning, and there was runners at the runner, runner at second with one out, and this shows you right here the veterans and what it takes to be a good ball player. A ball gets hit a one hop to Freddie Galvis. I forgot who. I think it was Glaber Torres. I want to say at second base. I could. I could. I could have been wrong. It was a one hopper, and I don't know why he was kind of hopping off the base a little bit. Galvis sees that, so instead of going all the way across to first base, short throw, right to second, Sogar slaps the tag on, he's out. But then here comes the brain play. Most players, when they get that out at second, hold the ball and they're good. Sogard realizes, oh wait, it's Gary Sanchez, he does not run well and sometimes just doesn't run at all. So he gets the out and immediately looks up at first base and thinks, hey, I got time. Rifles it over to first to get Gary Sanchez to end the inning. Runner at second, one out, and you get the inning and a double play. It's technically a 6-4-3 double play, but it's a very awkward double play, but a beautifully, beautifully done double play by the two, two of the veterans on the team. I think Justin Smoke was on the other, on the other end of the play at first base. So the vets... Showing the guys, you got to keep your head in the game at all times because you never know what, what what things are gonna happen. You can think on that play, right? Most most young guys before that play are gonna think, well, okay, get a ground ball to me. I'm gonna look the guy back and go to first, right? That's what you think. And most young players will do that, get the ball, and when they take it, when they're off that far, will either hesitate, hesitate and throw the ball away, or hesitate and just throw the ball to first. But Galvis, being the vet that he is, realized how far he was off the base, got the guy out at second. Then Sogard, realizing he could, get, he could get the out at first as well, got the job done. Beautiful job by the Jays there to get out of that seventh inning and to go into the eighth still with the 4-2 lead. Now, like I said, Biagini got that run in the eighth inning. But they bring in Ken Giles for the four-out save. We haven't seen that quite often this year from, from Giles. But he gets out of it. And it's a big job by Ken Giles there in the eighth inning, right? Because you go to that top of the eighth, and obviously Hicks hits the home run to lead off the inning, and we're like, oh boy, it's 4-3. Here we go. Here come the Jays, Barrett, ready to collapse. Then he gets the next, then BG gets the next two batters. Then Gio Rochella hits an infield single. They bring in Ken Reese Morales, a pinch hit. So Ken Giles now comes in. But then he walks K Money. And then he gets Brett Gardner to, uh, to, to fly out to Randall Gritchick to end the inning. Now, in the ninth inning, so we, we, Jays, won't, Jays won't get anything in the bottom half of the ninth. Uh, Bergerich and Biggio strike out, and then Guriel flies out. You get a lot of, you know, Voight singles to start the inning, and we're like, oh, no, 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 this is not going to happen, especially with our best guy on the mound. Come on now. Then he gets Gary Sanchez to strike out. Then Hicks walks, and we're like, oh, goodness me. And I could be sorry, sorry. They got LeMahieu to strike out to start the inning. Then Voigt singles to right field with one out. Then he gets Gary Sanchez to strike out. So there's two out. Then he walks Hicks. And now the tying run is in scoring position with two out. Glebor Torres at the dish. And he strikes him out to end the ball game. So the Blue Jays win 4-3. They get four runs in one game. Ideally, it was one inning. But they get four They get four runs in, in, in the game at all. They get eight hits. Haven't seen a lot of that lately. And they only give up three runs against a really good Yankees. I don't care about injuries, guys. I don't care that a Judge and Stanton are injured. Because they've been playing super well without these guys. So anytime they lose, you can't use it as, as an excuse. The Jays just, it happens. You know? And for the Blue Jay fans, you enjoy it. Because it always <laughs> doesn't happen quite often. It really doesn't. Now... With uh, that being said, and the game now done, I'm going to move over to the MLB draft, where I'm going to talk about the first three picks for the Toronto Blue Jays. 
And uh, the first pick, the 11th overall, Alec Manoa, right-handed pitcher out of West Virginia. And I like this guy, man. I, 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 I'm gonna start. To, I'm gonna really liking this guy already. Just seeing the highlight pack. I mean, you're gonna see highlights, right? You're gonna see all that kind of stuff. But seeing the emotion, oh, I like it. It reminds me of Strowman. You know, I'm a huge Strowman fan. I love the emotion that he brings at all times. And seeing Alec Manoa, 6'6", 260-pound right-hander, getting absolutely jacked up after a big strikeout. Oh, that pumps me up too good. I can't wait to see Alec Manoa. He's going to be a great player. The question will be, over time, will he be one of the guys at the end of the bullpen that be a dynamite guy at the end of the bullpen saving a game in the World Series or whatnot? Or is he going to be one of your top one to five starters? That's going to be the big question as he continues to develop. The 21-year-old, uh, I don't know where, he probably start with Vancouver as, as most of the draft picks do usually start with Vancouver Canadians, I'm assuming. Um... But uh, I'm really jacked up for him, and I, I, just because uh, uh, of the size of him, and the emotion, and the way his fastball plays, I love the look of Alec Manoa. It's great to see. I, I really, really enjoy watching him, and I can't wait. I can't wait to watch him play for the Blue Jays in years, years to come, because it's exciting. Now, next one in the second round, the 52nd overall pick, Kendall Williams. Another 6'6 right-handed pitcher. Now, not as big, not 260, but... His arsenal, he throws five different pitches. I love his delivery. Uh, he, again, above average fastball. The guy's 18 years old and he throws 90-something. So, hey, good to see you there. Young guy just coming out of high school. Again, when it comes to high school and pitchers, you, it's, it's kind of all up in the air. But I really like this pick. I really like Kendall Williams. I love, I think we can all agree, we love that the Jays went 1-2 their first round and their second round with pitchers. And they're good pitchers. They throw hard. That's what the new day and age is. That's what the new MLB is. If you don't throw 95 plus, what the heck are you doing? You got to be throwing corner strikes all over the place. And you don't usually see that in the draft. So to see a guy like Kendall Williams, a guy who throws hard with with high 90s, and he's and he's still only 18 years old. To see uh, Alec Manoa, a, a big right hander, throwing hard, it's great to see. Now. Where will these guys develop as time goes along? Only time is going to tell, guys. It's it's really that's what the draft is. I mean, you're not gonna, you might not see Alec Manoa for uh, Manoa for a couple of years. You might not see Kendall Williams for two or three years. It just it, that's the way the MLB draft works. Does it suck? Yeah, but you know what? The Jays, the baseball takes time to rebuild the team. And for the Blue Jays, we knew the big things going into this draft were pitching and outfielders. You knew the middle infielders were not going to be a problem because we know we have a stupid amount already. So you needed pitching and outfields. Your first two rounds were pitchers. Now, in the third round, the the Blue Jays go after Canadian boy, Dasan Brown. All right? And uh, Oakville native, played for Team Canada, played for the Ontario Blue Jays. And uh, look, this kid is fast. I think he got given a 70 grade, I think it was, in the, in the whole MLB scouting thing. A 70 is pretty damn quick, if you ask me. And, and Plus, he's a Canadian kid. So if you kind of, you say, oh, he's a 5 tool player for a Canadian boy. 6 tool player because he's a Canadian kid. But no, he again. He, he's not a big guy. He's not. A, he's not a. He's not a six six two two sixty kind of guy. But again, he's a guy that's fast. Uh, he's a good fielder. Uh, look, again, he's only seventeen years old right now, so it's really hard to gauge what he's going to be. But he's fast, and you look. Speed kills. No matter what level you go to, if you can get on for, if you can get on base for average, if you can hit 250, 260, eventually in the big leagues, and you can have that speed as a weapon, you're dynamite. Teams will love it. And for the Jays, we all know this Blue Jays team ain't the fastest. So you throw a guy like there in there, mm, it's beautiful. I love the pick, and he's an outfielder. Jays fans. We got ourselves two pitchers and an outfielder in the first three rounds. I know people love ripping on Shapiro and they love ripping on Atkins and all that kind of stuff. But you can't be angry at this because look at that. And then in the fourth round, they I think it's Will Robertson, uh, the fourth round pick for the Toronto Blue Jays, right fielder. So in the and I tweeted this out earlier when 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 uh, Will Robertson was picked in the, in the fourth round. I said on Twitter, I'm like. So through the, through the first four rounds of the MLB draft, the Jays have taken two pitchers and two outfielders. What have the needs been for this team? Pitchers and outfielders. I like it. Now, will these guys end up becoming anything for this team? Only time is going to tell. 
But you can't sit here and say you're angry with this draft. Because we, we were all preaching outfielders. We were all pre- preaching pitching. And that's what we got. Now you can get mad. Oh, in the fifth round, he took a shortstop. Why do you do that? Well, first off, it's the fifth round. Second of all, isn't it the, the, the position of shortstop, the guys that move into the outfield at times? So it can happen. All right? Just because you're drafted as an infielder doesn't mean squat. Josh Donaldson was drafted as a catcher. We all know he was the all-star third baseman. And cha- people change, guys. Look at Lourdes Gurriel. He probably won't see a whole lot of shortstop over his career. But he can play there. But he's going to see a lot of outfield. Just because you're drafted at one position doesn't mean anything, guys. All right? Now, uh, I'm not going to go through the minor leagues. I'm going to kind of leave that for a Jays loss. Plus, we had a lot to talk about today anyways. So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the victory today and you enjoyed the MLB draft by the Toronto Blue Jays, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video, or your thoughts on Clayton Richard, your thoughts on the, the way this team played today. They they got some clutch hits. By the way, that uh, single for Guerrero to give it that 4-2 lead, which ended up being the game-winning run, was a two-out single. Clutch hits. We talked about it. Uh, we you know, and they had no errors. You see what happens when you get some timely hits, some pretty good pitching, and you get some uh, good defense, you win a ball game. Now, it's easier said than done, obviously. Like, like we've talked about, guys, you're going to see some rough games from this team. You're going to see some okay games from this team. That's what happens with young teams. You saw it there today. I didn't even really run through the stats at all, guys, but uh, Sogar was 3 for 4, Guerrero 1 for 4, Smokey 1 for 3, Telez 1 for 4, Gritchick 1 for 4, and Galvis 1 for 3. Bijou was 0 for 3, but he walked once and came around to score. That's really about it, though, when it comes to the offense, guys. All right. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below everything about this game. The, the first three round picks for the Toronto Blue Jays. What are your thoughts on those three guys? I really like them. I, I think the, you add a little bit of everything. You have the size, you have the pitching, you got they throw hard, and then you add speed in the outfield, which the Jays do not have. So they added things they need. And they got some pretty good players. Of course, a Canadian kid as well. Can't go wrong with that. Oakville native. Love it. All right, so guys, comment down below everything about this team, the game today, the draft picks, everything. And uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition. It's probably going to be on, um, what is it now, Friday afternoon. Link is in the description for the podcast channel, guys, and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And check out Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Uh, Mo Buck is, 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 his, is his username on Twitter. Because he already posted the home, I think it was the, was it the Gritchick home run? I think it was the Gritchick home run. He already posted the one that made it a 2-1 game. He posted that to his uh, Instagram page. He's already posted the post-game stats and all that. So go check it out, guys. Blue Jays wave on Instagram. Evan and I uh, hope to have him on the, podca- on the podcast very soon to talk Blue Jays, to talk about all this kind of stuff, and, and to really, really break down this team because it's going to be a lot of fun talking to him on the podcast. It'll be a long segment, but you know what? It's going to be good, all right? So, guys, go check him out, guys. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. And I will talk to you guys Raptors edition tomorrow night. Game three of the NBA Finals in Oakland at Oracle Arena in Golden State as the Warriors and Raptors face off. And like I said, in game two of the NBA Finals, nine o'clock tip off in Oakland. The Raptors, so it sounds like there's no KD, there's no Kevon, Kevon Looney. So that's good. I, I mean, I know it likes to be injured, I get that. But for the Raptors' sake, and Clay Thompson is questionable, but everybody's saying he's going to play, so that's just that. So there you is, your little Raptor update. 9 o'clock tip-off tomorrow in Oakland as the Raptors look to take a 2-1 series lead in there. And hey, if you have the lead at the half, don't give up an 18-0 run to start the third quarter and you might be all right. That's all I got to say about that. And as for the Toronto Blue Jays, they play game two of the three-game set against the New York Yankees tomorrow night. It's a 7-0-7 first pitch there at Rogers Center. Canadian James Paxson on the mound for the Yankees. Trent Thornton on the mound for the Blue Jays. Game two of the three games, the Jays actually look to win the series against the Yankees. Would that be something else or what? Tomorrow night, like I said, 707 first pitch at Rogers Center. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.